sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. If I were to ask you a question, and that question would be, could we take this eucalyptus tree and swap the environment of the eucalyptus tree and the pine tree? So place the actual eucalyptus tree into the environment of the pine tree and take the pine tree out of that environment and put it into the environment of the eucalyptus tree. Could they survive? You might say, well, no, they can't survive. They would not be able to survive. The next question would be, why can't they survive? Why would we not be able to take the eucalyptus tree and make it survive in a cold environment? And also, if I were to ask you a question, why do whales have lungs? And you might say, well, lungs help them to breathe in more oxygen. So they breathe in more oxygen with lungs. And you would actually be partially incorrect if you gave me that response, because lungs do help breathe oxygen, but the actual whale is underwater. So the lungs are not really useful, or that useful for the whale underwater. It would have been more useful on land. So it's partially incorrect if you say that they need to have lungs to, to be able to breathe in more oxygen. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because the actual top point we're talking about today says define the term adaptation and discuss the problems associated with inferring characteristics of organisms as adaptations for living in particular habitats. So the first part we're going to talk about is, is adaptations. So the reason why certain things can survive in certain environments but not in other environments are your adaptations. So the eucalyptus tree has adaptations that allows it to be able to survive in a really hot environment but does not have adaptations that allow it to survive in a cold environment. And the second part was discuss the problems associated with inferring characteristics of living organisms as adaptations for living in a particular habitat. So the actual whale is actually a descendant of something which we used to live on land. So on land, having lungs made sense for it, because they need to have those lungs to be able to breathe in oxygen on land. But it would actually be more effective if it had gills on the water. So whilst these lungs are helped to breathe on the water, it would be better for them. They would be able to breathe more oxygen if they had gills. So we shouldn't just say, okay, well, they have lungs because it helps them breathe more oxygen. We should look at their actual environment to see if it's actually an adaptation. And I'm going to go over that more in detail as well. That's what we're going to do now. First, we're going to talk about a couple of adaptations. So there's three main different types of adapta adaptations. And as I said, so the actual verb says define. So we need to talk about what adaptations are. So adaptations are things or structures, so they can either be structural, physiological, or behavioral. Adaptations are adaptations that allow, that increase the likelihood of an organism surviving in the environment it's in. So increase the likelihood of an organism surviving in its environment. And remember, just the actual term organism is just any living thing. So that's the, uh, the actual definition of an adaptation, a thing that al allows the actual organism to have a better chance of survival. And there are three main types of adaptations. Uh, there are your structural adaptations, your physiological adaptations, and your behavioral adaptations. The structural ones are just to do with the actual structure. So for example, leaves are the good example. We mentioned the pine tree and eucalyptus tree. The pine tree would have these leaves. They would have broad leaves because broad leaves allow it to absorb more sunlight. And pine trees don't have much sun, so they need to have broad leaves to absorb more. Whereas the actual eucalyptus trees, your eucalyptus trees have these narrow leaves because that's an adaptation, a structural adaptation that allows it to be able to actually absorb less sunlight. It needs sunlight for photosynthesis, but it's got so much sunlight and so much heat because it's in a really warm environment. It wants to have a way to cool down. And by having thin leaves, it's going to get just enough sun, but not too much. So eucalyptus trees have thin leaves for adaptations, and then the actual pine trees would have thick leaves. Not thick, but wide leaves. Also fur. Fur is also a structural adaptation. So again, it's just a part of the actual animal. So fur allows us to be able to be, survive in more colder environments because the, the fur is insulating. Even something like a spine. A spine would be a good example of a structural adaptation. And a spine allows us to be upright, so upright, so which means we can actually stand. So this person here is standing, and that spine allows us to stand. So it's a structural adaptation. So without the spine, we wouldn't be able to walk on land. Uh, these were structural, and then we've got physiological. And physiological means it's kind of inside the body, inside the body. 
And it's something that the body, a response the body can do to be able to cope with an environment. So, for example, again, this person here, he's obviously looking not too well. And the reason why is because you have a sun here, which is producing lots of heat. And the way he tries to cope with that is he's sweating. You can see the sweat here. And the sweat gets produced as a response from the body. And the body basically tells the sweat glands to produce sweat. So sweat is a physiological response because it happens inside our body. Our body tells us to do it. It's not structural. It's not just there. We've got to make sure our body tells us to actually sweat. And then another one would be, for example, our blood vessels. Now this is how they're normal. This size of the actual lumen, which is the inside here, that's the normal size of a blood vessel. Whereas in this case, it's constricted. So for example, if it's really cold outside, you want to make sure you don't get most of your blood should stay away from your face because if it goes to your face, you're actually going to lose a lot of heat for that blood. And you want, if it's cold, you want to keep that heat close to away from your face and close to your organs. So by constricting the actual blood vessels at your face, you're going to have less blood and less heat being lost. No, less blood going to your face and to your arms, which means less heat being lost. So yeah, constricting just means less blood flow. And this happens when it's cold. Whereas if it's warm, you want to get rid of more heat. So what you do is your blood vessels actually dilate. This happens when it's warm. And this means that you have more actual heat being lost because there's more blood at your face and at your arms. So these are two different responses that happen inside your body, these responses. Behavioral are just respond like behavior responses. So things like, for example, this lizard seeking shade. So here's seeking shade. So he's actually looking for shade. He's going to, into shade. And this might be because it's really cold and warm outside. Whereas here, that is the same, different type of lizard, but very similar in terms of its body build. He is actually sun basking. So he's actually looking for sun. And that might be because it's actually really cold. So if it's really cold, he'll try to get as much sun as he can. And if it's really warm, he'll try to find shade. But that's behavioral. That's just him behaving a certain way. These are three main types of adaptations, structural, physiological, and behavioral adaptations. A couple of examples as well. And what you should know as well of adaptations. So I said that adaptations are things that increase the likelihood of an organism surviving its environment. But adaptations, so for example, if a if we used to have no spine, at some stage we, to, we, have, we had no spine, but the organism that had a first spine didn't just say, you know, I want to have a spine, give me a spine, and then it grew a spine. You know, you can't just want to have an adaptation. And you can't just tell your offspring, you know, you can't just go, okay, well, I'm not going to have an adaptation that I have like a spine right now, but what I can do is I can tell my, off, my I want my offspring, I want my children to have a spine. That's, that's not how it works. How it works called natural selection, and the way it works is basically the fittest survive. So the ones that we have the adaptation, and that if the adaptation is somehow beneficial. So if that adaptation somehow helps you, this adaptation will actually be passed on to the next generation, then passed on to the next generation. And over hundreds of thousands or millions of years, everyone might, every living thing in that environment might have a spine. But it doesn't work overnight, and it doesn't work, it doesn't work on purpose. It's actually random. So how things get adaptations is a random process. We can't control it, but it's more or less the environment selecting for it. And then the last part was discuss problems associated with inferring characteristics. So this is here. This is the actual evolution of a whale. So this is a whale today, as we know it today. And this is how it used to look like millions of years ago, whilst it was still living on land. And whilst it was living on land, obviously it needed to have lungs because you need to have lungs to be able to breathe air on land. But what happened is over millions of years, it went from land back into the ocean. But it still has its lungs now. So it still has lungs now. But overall, those lungs don't really, aren't really a benefit for it in the water where it is now. It could still, I mean, it would be fine having gills. So if you say, you know, lungs are an adaptation for the whale to be able to breathe better in the water, that would be false. Lungs used to be an adaptation for it to be able to breathe one of its past ancestors whilst it was living on land. But now that it's living on water, that's not the case anymore. So for the dot point, you should know the final term adaptation. Adaptation is something that increases the likelihood of an organism surviving in its environment. And there's three different types, structural, physiological, and behavioral. And then the second part was discuss the problem associated with inferring characteristics of an organism as adaptations for living in a particular habitat. So the whale was the example. We can't just say, okay, well, the whale has lungs. It must have those lungs to be able to breathe oxygen on the water better because that's not the case because its habitat 
has changed over time. Those lungs used to be useful on land, but now aren't the same positive influence anymore, and it would be probably better off having gills. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.